Hello, everybody. Welcome to another Yellow Chair Devotional. All right, our two friends from the road to Emmaus, they are excited, like a fire burning inside of them. And what got them so excited? Having Jesus teach them and study the Bible with them. All right, so we're going to look at what, like one verse that they might have been taught. Okay, so if we look quick from what we read yesterday in Luke 24, Luke 24, verse 26, Jesus is talking to them. And he said, the, the prophets said that the Christ must suffer these things before he enters his glory. Enters his glory. What do you think that means? All right, well, we're going to go back to the Old Testament. We're going to go back to the Old Testament to Daniel, one of the prophets. We're going to maybe do a similar Bible study to what Jesus showed these men that got them so excited. Okay, so grab your Bible. We're headed to the book of Daniel. How do we find Daniel? All right, so if we open our Bibles to about the middle, we tend to hit Psalms. Then we want to go past Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, Song of Solomon, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Lamentations, Ezekiel, Daniel. We want Daniel chapter 7. If you get Hosea, Joel, Omadiah, we've gone too far. Okay, so Daniel chapter 7, verse 13. So when we think about Daniel, we often think about, remember, like the lion's den. Maybe we think about him and his friends and the food they chose to eat. Maybe we think about Nebuchadnezzar's dream of the, of the image. That's kind of what we think about with Daniel. But Daniel was given amazing visions. He was a prophet, right? He was given visions from God of things that were to come. And so in verse 13 here, we're going to see that Daniel has a vision. And it is a vision of, what did Jesus say to the men on the road? When the Christ would enter his glory. Enter his glory. Okay, so God gave Daniel a dream, a vision, showing him the day that a man would enter glory. And here's the thing, Daniel doesn't realize that he's watching Jesus, but we do. So when we read this, think about, think about this, because what is glory? If you had to describe glory, is it like an amazing, blinding beauty? Is it a way to describe what we see and what we feel? Is it maybe that fire burning inside glory to see and enter glory? And so Daniel writes here in like, we're, we're going to use our, our imaginations to picture this because Daniel doesn't understand everything he's seen, but it gives us this beautiful picture of, of what happened when Jesus entered his glory. Okay, so if you need more time to find Daniel 7 verse 13, hit pause. Otherwise, here is what it says. And this is Daniel talking. He goes, in my vision at night, I looked. There in front of me was someone who looked like a son of man. All right, so all throughout the Gospels, Jesus describes himself as the son of man. All right. And so we, we get this clue, like, like Daniel didn't understand. He goes, he looks like, oh, he looks like a God, but he looks like a man. Who is this? And we're like, this is Jesus. And then what does Daniel says? He was coming with clouds in the sky. He came near God who has been alive forever. And he was led to God. The one who looked like a human being, like the son of man, was given the power to rule. He was also given glory and royal power. All peoples, nations, and men who spoke every language will serve him. His rule will last forever. His kingdom will never be destroyed. 
when Jesus enters his glory, he is led to God and given the power to rule, right? He's seated on the throne next to God. He is a king set to rule, given his glory. And then it says, everyone, everyone, we're all in the family of God, aren't we? All people, nations, humans who speak every single language imaginable, we will serve him and his rule, right? Jesus, our king, his rule will last forever. His kingdom will never be destroyed. Why will his kingdom never be destroyed? Because who did he defeat at the cross? He stomped the serpent. He defeated everything. His kingdom cannot be destroyed because he won. He won. So Daniel saw Jesus being made the king by God. How does this dream say that Jesus will be different to any other king who has ever lived? Because think about this, when Daniel was writing and having these visions, who was the king at this time? All right, he served under King Nebuchadnezzar. If we looked back at verse one of chapter seven, it was Belshazzar's first year of king. So Daniel has served under these different kings. And what is the difference between an earthly king and Jesus the king? Well, did everyone want to serve Nebuchadnezzar or Belshazzar or King David or any kings that have ever ruled on this earth? Are they a king for everyone or just their people? King Jesus, he is the king for everyone. He came to save everybody. We are all part of his family. It says that he has the glory and the power. His rule will last forever. King Nebuchadnezzar eventually was defeated. King Belshazzar was defeated. King David, he eventually died. King Solomon, he eventually died. What about King Jesus? He died, but what did he do? He rose again and he will reign forever and ever and ever. It says his kingdom will never be destroyed. Is Satan trying? Yes. Why do you think there's so much struggle going on around us? Because Satan knows he lost. And so is he going to continue to attack and try to destroy God's kingdom for as long as possible until Jesus comes again? Yeah. He's going to keep attacking. Imagine like firing cannonballs or flaming arrows at the kingdom of God. It doesn't work. But Satan keeps attacking and attacking and he attacks you and he attacks me and he attacks our family members and our communities and our churches and our schools and our friends. Satan keeps attacking and attacking and attacking going, I'm going to see if I can destroy them because I know his kingdom will never be destroyed. And so what do we do, ladies and gentlemen? Do we let Satan's attacks destroy us? I certainly hope not. We don't let him win in our lives because he already lost when Jesus won at the cross. And so those attacks are going to come, but whose rule will last forever? Whose kingdom will never be destroyed? Do you think that those two friends sitting at the table with Jesus in Emmaus, do you think all of a sudden they went, oh, it's not about Rome it will be destroyed someday, but it's not about that. It's about the forever kingdom. It's not about the attacks that I feel right now. It's not about the attacks that so-and-so is going through right now. It's about Jesus winning and being our king of everyone because he loves us all. He saves us all and says, hey, just say yes, just trust in me. It's gonna be okay. Jesus's power is hard to believe, especially when we look around the world today. For a king who is ruling over every person in every country, 
very few people seem to be talking about King Jesus. And that's sad. But ladies and gentlemen, that's why we celebrate Easter. That's why when the resurrection weekend comes, we take time to praise and celebrate our King. What is helpful to remember from Daniel's vision when it's hard maybe to believe that the risen Jesus really is ruling? Think about that. I'll say that again. When is it or what from Daniel's vision here is helpful for us to remember when maybe we're struggling to believe that King Jesus is ruling? For me, it's the picture of all people, everyone in God's family being in a kingdom that will never be destroyed. You know what that means? The attacks that I endure are never going to destroy me. I won't let them. Jesus won't let them never be destroyed. According to Daniel's dream, Jesus right now has all the power and the authority. He is the king of kings. He is seated on the throne right now. How does that make you feel? I hope it encourages you today. Let's say a prayer together and wrap up. Dear Jesus, you are our king. Thank you for entering that glory. What an amazing sight it must have been for Daniel to have this vision. And he didn't understand what he was seeing. Just like the men on the road to Emmaus, they didn't understand. But then Jesus, you revealed it to them. And you reveal it to us now. Your kingdom will last forever. It will never be destroyed. May we hold on to that and cling to you when the enemy starts attacking. May we remember that we will never be destroyed because we are part of your family, your kingdom. We are safe because you are on the throne. Thank you so much for your love. In your name, amen. All right. You could try and draw this vision of Daniel's. What would it look like for someone who looks like the Son of Man, for King Jesus to come with the clouds in the sky, ruling over all people, nations who speak every language with a kingdom that will never be destroyed, a rule that will last forever? What would that look like? Could you draw that? Could you write about it or describe it? I would love to see what you create. Maybe it's even with Plato, whatever it might be. Imagine, picture what Daniel must have seen and let that creativity come out of you. And I will see you next time.